Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week we're going to run down a checklist for picking winning stocks with Kevin Matris, our top stock screener here. This is something kind of different. Right. Uh, we, we haven't done this before. <laughs> it's kind of a step-by-step -step guide for picking winning stocks. Right. right? <laughs> yeah, it, check. Uh, you know, I am oftentimes asked uh, how I go about picking winning stocks, so I figured I would just kind of put together like a checklist. Okay. I mean, I do a bunch of different screens all the time, but I can't buy all of the stocks at once, so I usually run my stocks through a checklist. One thing that you're going to see, though, as I go through this, and I think the main takeaway, is to really just focus in on what works. You know, there's over 10,000 stocks out there. You need a way to pick the good ones. Uh, and this is a way to be able to focus in on what works so you can create a repeatable way to consistently beat the market. And this is what we're going to be going through today. So is this just a combination of all of the different strategies that uh, you've outlined for us in the past? Uh, yes and no. Uh, again, I do run a lot of different strategies. They key in on a lot of different things. But as I said earlier, I cannot buy every single stock that comes through through all of these strategies. So before I actually get into a stock, I will bump it up against this checklist. So let me just jump into the checklist okay. and I'll go through each one one by one. Okay? All right, sure. First one is the Zacks rank. So I think that is one of the best things that anybody can look for. Uh, the Zacks rank has proven to be one of the most profitable rating systems out there. And I'm looking for stocks that have a Zacks rank of less than or equals to three, which means a one, two, or three. That's a strong buy, buy, or a hold. In reality, what I'm really doing is I'm just excluding anything with a four or a five, which is a sell or a strong sell, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next one is I want to make sure that the stocks are in the top 50% of industries. We have said this before, and I'll say it again, roughly 50% of a stock's price movement can be directly attributed to the group that it's in. So to turn the probabilities of success in your favor, you want to focus in on the, the industries that are doing the best, right? Mm -hmm. Next, I want to see earnings estimate revisions. Now, it is true that the Zacks rank already focuses in on earnings estimate revisions, but the Zacks rank really keys in on F1 and F2. I am looking at all periodicity. So I want to see Q1, Q2, and I want to see increasing earnings estimate revisions on a one-week, four-week, and a 12-week basis, okay? I also want to see positive EPS surprises and positive sales surprises. Again, positive surprises beget more positive surprises. So if a company has surprised positively in the past, there is a greater likelihood that they will surprise again in the future. And in a perfect world, I want to see companies that are going to have a high probability of surprising because that's going to be a benefit for me. All right. I want to see positive growth rates for the next two years, right? That means the current year and the next year. Nothing crazy, nothing extreme, but again, since there's so many stocks out there, do I want stocks that are not making money or do I want stocks that are making money? I want stocks that are making money. Then I've got valuations. There are a lot of valuations out there. My favorite valuation is the price to sales ratio. I like to see stocks with a price to sales ratio of less than or equals to one. But I also know that not all good stocks will have a price to sales ratio of less than one. So I will also look at the price to sales ratio and I would prefer it to be below the median for the industry. But the one thing I would say is I will almost never buy a stock with a price to sales ratio above four because in my testing I have found that once the price to sales ratio gets above four, there is a higher probability for those stocks to fail. So usually that's where I cut it off, okay? Then I want return on equity. Preferably, I would like the return on equity to be uh, excuse me, above the median for the industry, so I want it to be better than its peers. Um, and preferably, I would like to see the return on equity getting better from its five-year average. That shows management is doing a good job. Also, too, I, I would like to see increasing margins. This means the company is earning more for every you know, dollar of sales they make, and that goes right to the bottom line. Now, in addition to the fundamentals that I look at, I also look at technicals as well, and let me hit them real quick. I want to see increasing weekly price and volume. 
Preferably, I would like to see prices and volume increase uh, either two or three weeks because if you're looking at increasing price accompanied by increasing volume, usually that suggests institutional sponsorship. And if you got institutions buying, usually that projects future demand, i.e. higher prices. Two more here, moving averages. I'd like to see the stocks trading above the medium term moving average, which is the 50 day the long-term moving average, which is the 200-day, and if possible, I would prefer to see it above the short-term moving average, which is the 10 and the 20. And then lastly, I look at the chart pattern. Ideally, I would like to see a bullish chart pattern on the daily, a bullish chart pattern on the weekly. If it's a neutral chart pattern, <clears throat> I'm still okay with it, but if there is a bearish chart pattern, usually that is a no-go for me. So those are the basic building blocks of what I will look for when I'm selecting, <clears throat> when I'm deciding what stock I want to get into. See, I, I think I counted about 11. Yeah, that was in that checklist. I almost lost my breath going through that <laughs> or lost <laughs> my voice. fell asleep during that thing. <laughs> uh, that, that's a lot of items. It is, you know, uh, and actually there are more items that I will regularly look at as well, but you have to, uh, have to have a basic set of building blocks, and this is the basic set, and if they pass this, then I feel real comfortable that I have a high probability of success. All right, now are there stocks that resulted from this checklist? Yeah, here's five new stocks that came through the checklist this week. It's very exciting. Let me reveal them. <laughs> uh, you've got Complete Production Services. Dana Holding, Integris, uh, Invacare Corp, and Time Warner Cable. Once again, all of these companies have come through uh, items that have proven to work. And if you can key in on this stuff, you can pick winning stocks on your own, you can do so consistently, and this way you'll be able to achieve your investment goals. All right, do you own any of those? Not yet. All right. Yet. If you want to view that checklist that Kevin ran through for you, all 11 items of them, <laughs> uh, in print, go to our homepage, zax.com, if you're not there already, and click on the live link headline right next to Kevin's picture. It'll take you right to that checklist that he ran down for you here uh, in this video. And if you want to find out more about the Research Wizard, which is the backtesting tool software program that Kevin uses to achieve all of his screens, zax.com slash research wizard is where you should look. With Kevin Matris and the screen of the week, checklist of the week, I'm Terry Ruffalo. <laughs>